Hi there. Welcome back to the Rare Book Views channel, where I'm hoping to give you a look at some rare books and maybe some thoughts on books. Today I'm going book shopping and rare book hunting. I have a list of things I'm looking for, and I also have started to think that this year might be like last year when um, shipping around the holidays was a little bit of a challenge. So I'm doing my Christmas shopping now and I have a list of people that need the perfect book and I take this responsibility so seriously. So I'm hoping to find some of that and then you just never know what you'll find. I'm going to one of my favorite bookstores. It's a gigantic warehouse and the, sometimes the prices are very good and sometimes they're not so it's a little bit like playing the lottery and the people watching is good. It's a gigantic place, so you can get a little lost in the bookshelves, and there's not a ton of rhyme or reason why anything is where it is. When you go around a corner, there might be a few shelves, and then it'll say, the rest of fiction is in aisle 17, which is in a completely different part of the store. So it's pretty fun to get lost browsing, and I am excited to see what I can find. So let's go take a look. Okay, uh, I had a great time at the bookstore. It was a good day to be shopping. There were not a ton of people there, but the people watching was solid. You never know what other people think are interesting books. Always fascinating. They made a bunch of changes at the bookstore. Things were not where I left them, and they had this great section of the smaller format series books. They had a bunch of them. Uh, they had moved some things around. I remember I worked in high school and college. I worked at a Barnes and Noble. We used to say the bookstore is a living thing because things were not always where you left them. If Chekhov was on aisle seven one month and a few months later it might have been shifted because more books in the earlier part of the alphabet came in and you're constantly moving things around. But this bookstore, <laughs> serious changes. Uh, but I did find some cool things. Let's see. I got a great copy of The Wind in the Willows. This is a great children's book. Everyone should have maybe a couple copies. <laughs> I really love this. This is Scribner's edition. It's a really nice copy. It's got this pretty dust jacket and the actual cover of the book is the same. It's this nice print. There are some copies of this book that have this map as the end papers. This one doesn't, but it's in the middle of the book. And this might remind you, if you're a Winnie, Winnie the Pooh fan or an A. A. Mill fan, this might remind you of some of those books. And that is because the illustrator is the same. It's Ernest Shepard. So if you're a Winnie the Pooh fan or an A. A. Milne fan or anything of that ilk, you may want to check out Winnie the Wolves because it would be a nice addition since it's the same illustrator. This book has great illustrations and they are kind of reminiscent of our friends in Pooh Land in the forest. I'll show you a couple. There's definitely that same animal vibe, same style, so it's really fun. This was a bargain, and it was, I think this is a 1950s edition, which is pretty cool. I also got in the children's section a UK edition of one of the Harry Potter books. I collect these, and then when I get 
all of them. I'll sell them as a lot unless they're better than the editions I have. But I actually have the hardcovers and some other. I have quite a few Harry Potters. I'll put a link in the notes so that you can see. I did a tour of my Harry Potter collection so you can check that out. These are really fun. If you're a Harry Potter fan or you have someone that you're holiday shopping for, these are great because they have the original British spellings and the British slang. So that at times they're a little bit different than the text that you might remember from your Harry Potters. I got this little number is Moby Dick. This is baffling to me. I don't think it's a bridge. It doesn't say that it's a bridge, but it is tiny. And this is in that section where the, this bookstore has all of these different uh, series that are smaller format. This is Every Man Library. Every Man Library, still in print. Also still classics. Uh, this one is from 1949, which is pretty good. It's really, it has a little bit of scars from over the years. It's got a little bit of staining. It's definitely something that's happened here. But Moby Dick is hard to get in a vintage copy. So I'm excited to see how this one will do. I have a nice, I have the Modern Library Edition. Usually Modern Libraries are also this size, but they have a few that are giant editions and Moby Dick is one of those where it's a little taller and a little wider. Um, but this is a cool copy so this will go up on my eBay page and hopefully fund my addiction to the books. And I'm excited to see how this one does. This one is a little bit like going to Vegas because I don't know really how much it's worth. I can't find any that have sold. It's not in pristine condition but it's in good condition. Uh, Moby Dick is a hard book to find a vintage copy of and if you're, this is the kind of classic if you're gonna read this. I just think it's not quite the same if you have a brand new paperback. So it's nice to get something like this in a vintage copy. If you've never read Moby Dick, go for it. It is, the language is just so soothing and beautiful. And even if you get lost in the plot, I mean, there's a whale, spoiler. But other than that, you're not gonna get too confused. So even if you get lost in the old timey language, it's not that bad. This is a good one to get into if you're looking to get into classics. I also found this is really exciting. This is Heritage Press. Heritage Press I've talked about before. They had a great series of classics books in nice formats in slipcases. Similar to the British Folio uh, publisher, Heritage Press made these cool editions made by nice publishers. This is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I just talked about this when I gave suggestions for Halloween classics, so I'll put a link to that video also. This is a great book to get into if you want to read a classic and it's October or the fall. This would be great in November maybe or whenever your weather changes. This one came with the sand glass. This is a periodical that Heritage Press put out with the books and it'll give you a little history of the book and sometimes the illustrator, sometimes the printing situation, fun facts. So it's always nice when you can find that with it. I think this one, I actually, I have this. Uh, exact book. <laughs> and I think this one is later, so I'm going to keep the one that I have. This is another game that I play of, oh, is this book nicer than the copy I have? Maybe I need to check. So I buy them and then I don't keep them. Um, so this one will also be ending up on eBay and it's in fantastic shape. This uh, slipcase is also pristine. It's a little bit faded. You can tell that somewhere around here was the top of their bookshelf. So they got a little more sun, which you should really be careful of. Um, in your home books to make sure that they don't get faded. This is a really nice book. So I got four books on my shopping trip. I don't believe I'm keeping any of them. <laughs> I did get some books for my present shopping, but I can't show you those. Those are a secret. So it was a great day. I found a few things. I had a great time. And I really wish that bookstore was closer so I could go more often. But when I do, I will be sure to share it with you. I would love to hear what you're reading or what treasures you found. So please drop me a line and let me know. And happy reading.